China has become a laboratory for the world in terms of building design, with many of the world's most daring structures being built here, including one new building that is pushing back the boundaries of the possible. Well, we have looked at many different geometric arrangements, height, a slope, dispositions of different blocks, and none of them actually work. So there's a whole sequence of what if, do this, doesn't work, you know, throw it away, you know, a lot of paper, you know, into the bin. But at the end of the day, one image caught the eye of everyone. And so the very first sketch, after all that development of different volume, when I showed it to the client, he thought, wow, this is very new, I haven't seen this before, can it be done? That's how they started. One feature that was the first to be designed was the suspension bridge, running right through the heart of the building. In terms of spatial excitement, the bridge gives you something that walking down escalator will never give you. And it is that little bit of excitement, little bit of uniqueness, I think will put this building on the map. It's 235 meter long. It's the same as the Millennium Bridge in London. It can cross River Thames. This bridge is the longest pedestrian bridge inside a building in the world. A building on a vastly ambitious scale, using one and a half times as much steel as Beijing's Olympic Stadium, enough glass to cover 17 football pitches, and an untested, unproven roof that no one knows will actually work on a building of this size. The roof covered the whole site, actually comes to nearly 30,000 square meters. And we are looking for a material which is very safe during fire. What Winston and his team were looking for seemed impossible. A lightweight roof, strong enough to withstand Beijing sandstorms, snow and extremes of temperature, but that would disintegrate as soon as hot smoke came in contact with it. In effect, opening the building up to the open air in case of a fire. Amazingly, they found a company that could offer them just that. Our company has done projects all over the world. The biggest projects we've done in Beijing are the Water Cube, the National Swimming Center, and then there's Parkview Green. Parkview Green is a project that undertakes a massive architectural challenge. Instead of a traditional exoskeleton, it has an environmental envelope. This creates an internal microclimate between the buildings. We had to do extensive tests of the material's strength, flexibility, stretchiness and torsion to make sure it could withstand these pressures. Through these tests, we could ascertain that the material was indeed fit for this project. If ever there was a fire inside Parkview Green, the ETFE wouldn't catch fire like a normal material would. It would simply turn into droplets and it would never catch fire. But the ETFE does far more than this. The bubble wrap style design, using plastic cushions pumped full of air, allows 95% of light to enter the building, is better at insulating, and has higher resistance to the weathering effect of sunlight than glass. I'm trying to give a message. You should have some environmental responsibility. And we hope this building can give that kind of message. Sustainability, being green, can be commercially viable. In China's capital, a new pyramid three quarters the size of its Giza cousin has risen from the Beijing soil. But instead of Egyptian royalty, it houses some of the most cutting edge building technology on the planet and poses as a beacon of sustainability. The cornucopia of features that set it apart include water conditioned ceiling technology, an angled roof to avoid cutting the light source for nearby residents, natural sunlight throughout the building, saving on electricity and locally sourced materials. As the finishing touches are put on the building, the proof of the usability of these green features will come when an estimated five to 8,000 office workers, shoppers, and hotel guests pass through it every day. <laughs>